It happened secretly and painlessly while I was sleeping. Tiny blood vessels deep within my eyes burst, shattering my visual field. In the morning, I opened my eyes to a world that had disintegrated into a psychedelic swirl of optical confetti. When I looked into a mirror, I could barely find my face. On a hot August morning in 2006, my identity as a sighted person dissolved. Adapting to the changes in my eyesight was pretty easy compared to my struggle to adapt to the social and financial realities of blindness. In Canada, the unemployment rate of blind and visually impaired people is between 80 and 90 percent. Job interviews for the first time in my life were excruciating, an agony of indecision whether to disclose or not to disclose that I'm legally blind. Blindness does not impair my ability to move, to think, or to communicate. My creativity, my personality, everything about me is unchanged by blindness. I and many other people who are blind completely reject the idea of blindness as a disability. In our view, it's a variant human characteristic. Blindness is simply a different interface with the environment. People who are blind are not disabled by blindness. We're disabled by belief. The belief that the inability to see somehow diminishes your ability to contribute or participate in mainstream society. I'm here tonight to dismantle that belief, a belief that's been kicking around since our very earliest civilizations, and one which continues to animate and inform our perceptions and expectations of blindness even now in the 21st century. One of our most primal fears is the fear of the dark. And blindness has always been linked with darkness. Not just physical darkness, but the fear of the unknown and the fear of the invisible. Blindness has always kind of embodied all of our existential human angst and was once believed to be such a dreadful way of being that it was believed to be a curse imposed on a person for some horrible wrongdoing on her part or even on the part of one of her ancestors. To be blind was to be shamed. And people who were blind were often either expelled from or shunned within their communities. There was one notable exception, and those were soldiers who were blinded at war. These wounded warriors were celebrated as heroes and regarded with great respect. Have you ever wondered about that phrase, legally blind? Isn't it odd? There's no legal deafness. No one talks about legal paraplegia or legal depression. So what's unique about blindness? And what is the link between blindness and the legal system? The idea dates back to the Middle Ages, a time of great scarcity when bands of people who had for some reason been banished or marginalized from their communities roamed the roads of Europe eking out an existence as beggars. These bands of people existed in such great numbers 
that a law was passed stating that only those people who had a license to beg were entitled to prevail upon the hard-working citizen for charity. To receive one of these licenses, you were required to appear before a magistrate and prove that your need for charity was real. If you were a blind person who was not welcome in a community, that expulsion itself was your reason to have to beg. And if you could prove that you were really blind and not some malingerer pretending to be blind, you would get a license which you wore around your neck and which declared to the world that you were truly blind, entitled to charity, one of the deserving poor, legally blind. Visual artists of that time and for all the centuries since painted the grim realities of the Middle Ages and we see blind people depicted in paintings in a very archetypal and iconic way. Blind people in, in the history of art are rarely seen to be occupied. They just kind of sit there staring vacantly into space. They're surrounded by objects that in the artist's eye indicate blindness, sticks, the tin cup, the sign around the neck. They're portrayed as frail and feeble, loners, mystics, sometimes bedridden, always the loner. These stories and myths and images have been passed down to us for hundreds of generations. They are the landscape of our culture, so deeply embedded in our collective subconscious, in our collective beliefs, that we're unaware of them. Yet they continue to show up in 21st century North America as bias and discrimination. In Canada, people who are blind could be categorized in two groups. The first are war veterans who've been blinded in war or people who've been blinded in industrial or other accidents. These people have access to private rehabilitation programs, to vocational programs, retraining programs, psychotherapy, service dogs, the latest adaptive technologies. And all of these things are funded as they should be by insurance programs, workers' compensation programs, etc. However, if you're born blind in this country, or you have a degenerative eye disease, you receive nothing. There is no insurance coverage because your blindness arises from a pre-existing condition. Why are we still in the 21st century acting as though the lives of people who are born blind or who are genetically blind are of less value than those who are accidentally blinded? In my wallet, I carry a picture ID. It has my photograph. It has a number on it. It's my client number. In Canada, as a blind person, there is no rehabilitation under the public health care system. People who are blind in Canada, who are born blind or who have a genetic disorder that results in blindness, are referred to charity organizations for rehabilitation. This picture ID has been issued to me by a charity organization. 
And if I want to receive any of the benefits available to blind people, things like free movies, not for me, but for you if you come with me, or free, dom <laughs> yeah, free domestic airfare, not for me, but for my companion. You can sign up later. Um, <laughs> all I have to do is show this card. And if I'm one of the 80 to 90 percent of unemployed Canadians, then to qualify for the Canada Disability Pension, all I have to do is present this card, and I'll receive that pension, no questions asked. I am legally blind. I stand here tonight on the shoulders of giants. Blind advocates and sighted allies from around the world who for over half a century have been declaring parity, not charity, for people who are blind. And that declaration has all but been eclipsed by the voices of well-intentioned charity organizations who were challenged with the contradiction of on the one hand proclaiming the abilities of the rehabilitated blind while on the other hand having to exploit the very stereotypes that we struggle to overcome in order to soften your heart to give generously to the cause. Parity, not charity, for people who are blind. I own a smartphone, and that smartphone boasts its accessibility features. And it's awesome. I can pick up that phone and touch the screen, and a little microphone pops up, and I can dictate a text, and it'll turn it into, you know, alphabetic text, and I can verbally command that the text gets sent, and you'll receive that text. It's amazing. Until you decide to respond to the text, your text comes back to me. Will that phone tell me what that text says? No, <laughs> it won't. <laughs> I have a tablet, beautiful piece of technology, also boasts accessibility. And it is, if I confine my tablet use to my browser or my email, but as we know, most things on tablets run on apps. The apps do not respond to the accessibility software in the tablet. Google Play, Netflix, Facebook, LinkedIn, any shopping app, totally inaccessible to blind and visually impaired people. There are a lot of innovators in this room. There's a lot of designers in this room. <laughs> a lot of entrepreneurs in this room. Heads up, folks. When you begin to consult with, to collaborate and co-create with your blind and visually impaired colleagues, and they are out there, then we're going to have products that actually do the job. And you will be helping us deconstruct barriers of all kinds that have existed from the dawn of civilization. We live in a time of stem cell regeneration, robotic cars, retinal implants, virtual realities, this is the time, it is here, when we can take the nuisance and the barriers and the otherness right out of blindness, completely. It's here. It is here. Nobody should be held hostage by some archaic belief about what is or isn't possible for them. Nobody should be defined by the body she lives in. The resilience and the intelligence and the creativity of the human spirit transcends flesh and bone and sight and sound. 
And here's an idea whose time is long overdue. There is no them. There's only us. And together, we can do this. We can create an inclusive, beautiful world full of opportunity for everybody. Thank you.